Hey everybody, what's going on? And we are back talking about gimbals this time. Now gimbals, I mean, a few years ago they were either for smartphones, they were relatively cheap, or they were very expensive for your DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. But over the last couple of years they've come down in price, come down in size especially. And so today we're gonna to be talking about one that has got a lot of people talking in the marketplace right now, that is the Ronin SC. Now like all our reviews, we are not paid for this review at all. Not sponsored in any way for it. The gimbal goes back. I'm actually using it right now as I'm walking up flights of stairs to show you how steady it is on the Sony A9 with a 16-35 2.8 GM lens. Anyway, for this review, we're not just gonna talk about the gimbal itself, but if you're new to gimbals, you wanna get one, this might be your first gimbal. What are the frustrations? What are the joys of using it? Let's find out right now. Now talking about the Ronin SC for a moment here. Now the Ronin SC is the little brother to the Ronin S. Now that gimbal was designed for larger DSLRs like the 1DX Mark II or maybe the Nikon D850, the 5D Mark IV or larger mirrorless cameras. Now the Ronin SC came out about a few weeks ago. Now this is really designed for the mirrorless market segment. So your X-T3s, your Sony Alpha series, like what I have on the gimbal now, uh, your Sony A6000 series, you know, smaller mirrorless cameras, even the Canon EOS R or the Nikon Z6 or Z7, this, will, this is the gimbal that's for those cameras. So for a lot of YouTubers and filmmakers in the market, this is gonna be the gimbal for them. Now, the one thing that a lot of people are touting, of course, is the weight reduction. This is like half the weight of the Ronin S. This comes in about 1.09 kgs. It's slightly smaller, of course, than the Ronin S as well in terms of its overall stature. But I gotta tell you the truth here. Even at 1.9 kg, while it's light to hold without a camera, once you get a camera and a lens and everything set up, this is not the easiest thing to hold for a longer period of time. So while you watch a lot of YouTubers out there talking about this, that it's so light, it's easy to move around, you gotta understand that their shots are only about maybe 15, 20, 30 seconds max, then they're stopping, then they're reshooting, or there's a lot of edits going on into play. So there's a lot of that filmmaking magic that comes into it that makes this gimbal seem a lot lighter than it actually is. It, it is light consider, considering other gimbals out there, but it's still very hefty. So if you don't work out, you better start if you wanna start using a gimbal like this. Now also in terms of its size, now the one thing about this, the Ronin SC is that you can take it apart in three different sections. So this is the tripod grip mount. This comes about, uh, off like this, you can screw it off. This one I'm holding on is the grip and also the battery. This is where the power comes into play. Then when you take that off, then you've got yourself the base and with the arms. Now, I just gotta double check to make sure I get it in there right. Now this makes it much easier to carry in a backpack or carry on a trip with you. And when you pack it up, it's very, very easy and very light to take it with you. So there's no issues with that at all. Also, the build quality on the Ronin SC, as others have mentioned, it feels really, really premium. I mean, you got handed to DJI. They've used a, a, like magnesium, aluminum, composite plastics. They've used a lot of great materials on this to really give it a very high-end, very well-made product that you know that you can bang it around and you're not gonna break anything. But I mean, don't drop it off a building, but you know what I mean? You can take it with you on trips and you're gonna be fine. Other things to notice about it, the battery life is pretty good. It runs about 11 hours on a charge and you can charge it by a USB-C and it charges relatively fast. I have no issues with that at all. It comes with all that in the box. So if you need the USB-C cable, you got it inside there and it's pretty good to go. And also you've got this tripod stand, as I mentioned before, so if you wanna set this on a table, you wanna do an interview, you maybe wanna just record it yourself just sitting there and talking, this is perfect for that. It really fits a lot of those uh, requirements that you might need. But now let's talk about gimbals in terms of why you might want a gimbal. Now if you're new to it and you're kinda of going to yourself, well, I see these gimbals, they're becoming less expensive, you know, maybe I wanna add this into my, you know, my, my equipment um, arsenal, if you will. And the thing about gimbals you need to know is that th while they are good to have and they really add some beautiful shots and if you want that stabilization that, you know, I mean, while some cameras have image stabilization like the Sony and like the Nikon does, gimbals can give you another level to that where it's really smooth. You can get those really nice panning shots and look just cinematic. You also under need to understand its limitations and also need to know you as a filmmaker what you're going to use it for. It opens up a lot of creativity and while it's exciting to use at the beginning, you might find yourself, you know, kind of dialing back over time unless you really sort of plan your shots and understand how the process works. Now, if you're just someone that, look, you go, I maybe, you know, I might want to go on a trip with it and I might want to just get some cool shots. You know what? 
maybe this might be a bit too much for you. You might just get a phone gimbal. I mean, DJI has them, other companies have them as well, and you can use your smartphone and get a lot of great shots that way. But if you were willing to take your mirrorless camera out and you want to, let's say, go on a nice vacation and shoot, let's say you're at the beach or the ocean, and you want to shoot the water coming up on the shoreline or shoot, you know, people just running around playing volleyball and stuff like that, that's where this is really going to come into play, and that's where you're going to really get some great shots. But also notice, know this, that it's not just the gimbal and the shots that you're going to be having to take into consideration, it's the editing as well because you're gonna have a lot more footage to edit, okay? It happens to the best of us. You're really gonna start being creative and all of a sudden you're gonna look at your SD card going, wow, I got a lot there, well, how am I gonna go through this? So take your time, enjoy the journey with the gimbal, but plan your shots in advance, and then as you know it, and before you know it, you're on your way to becoming a pseudo filmmaker just by adding this into your repertoire. Anyway, let's go down to the studio and let's check out how to set up the Ronin SC with the Sony A9. All right, so now we're back in the studio, and what we're gonna do a little different here is we're gonna actually start from the finished product, which is this, the camera balanced on the gimbal to the very beginning. Now, this is not gonna be a step-by-step -step process, but just more of an understanding of what it's like to balance the gimbal, things you need to take note of, things that some of the videos might not tell you about, just to sort of help you along the way if this is gonna be your first gimbal. Okay, first thing to notice is if you're looking at this, you might notice there's something different about the A9, and that is, the eyepiece I had to remove. And the reason being is that, this is common with a lot of these gimbals of this size, is we have this arm here, these two arms that merge at this joint. This is good in some ways and also bad in other ways because depending on your style of camera, if you have a larger eyepiece, you need to remove it. Now, if I have the EOS R and I try to balance it on it, I need to remove that eyepiece with screws. It's very finicky, it's very difficult. We do not recommend doing this unless you are very good with it. Uh, those tiny little screws in there. Um, so for like that kind of camera, we'd recommend going up a size in gimbal because it can be an issue. But with the Sony A9, you can easily pop this off and then this allows movement if I want to move this gimbal up and down. Another thing to notice about balancing, I'm using the 1635 GM 2.8 lens. It's a telescopic zoom lens. So if I change the focal length, just by going in, the balance shifts. Going all the way out, the balance shifts again. It's something to keep note of. So if you're one of these types that wants to zoom in and out with your gimbal, you might need to rebalance unless you have an internal zoom lens. Got that out of the way, now let's talk about one of the things that people don't tell you about, and that's size of lens and camera. Now a lot of gimbals, they talk about, okay, it can handle this much payload, like two kilograms, or four pounds, and then when you measure your lens and your camera, you'll think, well, that fits. But not all, that's not always the case. It's also the length of the lens that comes into play. Now, if you look here, you'll see underneath, there's actually a lens uh, mount to actually balance the lens here. This gives a little bit more uh, ease of use when you're balancing the lens. With, sometimes without this, you can't balance it correctly with the body. So if you're using a longer lens like this, you'll need to add this piece on. Now, with the Ronin SC, it's relatively easier to set up than other gimbals, but it's also complicated in one regard. This is a three-axis gimbal, and you normally would balance horizontal, you would balance vertical, and then you'd go on its axis, so to speak, okay? But part of this thing that you need to know that a lot of people don't tell you is that every little millimeter makes a difference. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna release this screw here. That releases this grip here, so I can do a quick release if I want to take it in and out. But on the Ronin SC, it actually doubles as your balance left to right or front to back. On other gimbals, this is a separate uh, piece altogether, but in the Ronin SC, it's all together, which becomes a little bit frustrating because if I just move it a millimeter, oh, like that, it can come off. Be very careful, <laughs> actually. Put a lens cap on your camera before you do any of this stuff because sometimes it does come off like that, especially if it's very loose. These are things you need to know that they don't always don't show you in the videos. They kind of cut this stuff out and they kind of get to the usage of the gimbal, but case in point. So it's really about every finite move that makes a difference. This will take you a number of minutes your very first time. Don't expect to do it in two minutes. It might take you a half hour. It's okay. It's part of the process. Now we're going to put the camera inside of this. This is where it gets a little bit more tedious. As you can tell, right off the bat, 
you can see, it's tilting, it's tilting down this way. I need to fix that. Okay, so this is pretty good. It's a little tilted down and it's a little bit tilting to the right. That means I now have to move this a little bit to, to my left and now I'm pretty much center. Okay, now I've done this a few times, so I'm a little bit used to this setting, but if it's your first time, like I said before, relax, take a deep breath, and enjoy the process. <laughs> okay, now once you have this balance horizontal, now you gotta balance it vertically. All you need to do is just make sure that it stands vertical, or just stays there for a moment. As you can tell, this one needs to be readjusted. Now, as you can tell, there's a little bit of an issue. The eyepiece is hitting the back of this gimbal. Frustrating. So what do you do? You've gotta make some concessions on this. Sometimes you try your best to get everything balanced, but besides, because of the size of the camera, you might not be able to get vertical or horizontal. So try to get horizontal as much as you can, and then also towards the size. I'm gonna lock this arm out so I don't, it doesn't keep switching. Now, if I'm balanced like this, and it's pretty straight, I should be good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna turn it on. Just hold the power button down for a second. As you can see, it will sort of straighten itself up a little bit, put itself in position. Camera looks straight, everything looks good to go. Then you can check this on your phone. I'll walk you through some of these steps now. First thing you wanna do is connect, make sure that the Ronin is connected to your phone. Then you go to balance adjustment. And it's just basically about turning, creating the gimbal to its side, about 45, 15, well they say 15 degrees. Do this with two hands. As you can tell, it's kind of calibrating itself. So on my screen it says, tilt, rebalance needed, roll excellent, pan excellent. Now, because of the size of the camera and the lens, sometimes you're not gonna get all these excellent, 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 that's okay. Through your filming process, if you see that there's some issues or struggling, you might need to re, uh, readjust a little bit, but for the most part, it should be good. Now, another option to this is, is when you go to motor parameters, it's auto-tune, because depending on the weight of the camera and the lens, this auto-tune actually helps the gimbal dedicate the power that it needs to calibrate the camera. Okay, auto-tune successful, we're good to go. Now, some of the cool features of this is Force Mobile. So, that's where it's a gyroscope in the phone and it adjusts the controls the camera as I want, as I move it around. This could be cool for some action shots or some fun different uh, kind of videography shots if you're in the background and you just want to put, let's say, the gimbal on a table or if you have a camera guy holding it and moving it around, you can capture stuff like this. I don't think it's something you're going to use all the time, but it's there. Now another feature that is uh, very unique to the uh, Ronin SC, of course, is Active Track 3.0. Now, we were trying Active Track by putting the phone on the side here. We weren't having a lot of success with it. But after putting it on top through the hot shoe, Active Track works pretty well, I have to say. So you could put this on a tripod or you could put this on a table and you could actually track a scene or track people around without having to do anything but press record. But anyway, so to wrap up my thoughts on the Ronin SC, because this has been quite a long video, I have to say that I like the gimbal. It's I think DJI has done a tremendous job with the app, with the functionality, the ease of use. As I mentioned before, the two axes in the back make it very limiting for certain mirrorless cameras in terms of the eyepiece and in terms of the size of it. So that might push you to go up to a larger gimbal, which you might not have to because of weight. And also because of balancing here, you have two positions to balance in one area, which can be very tedious and a little bit frustrating. And the weight, while it is much lighter than the Ronin S, it is still quite heavy, so get to the gym, get those arms ready. Anyway, with that, leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. We appreciate your thoughts, your comments, your feedback. Follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.